Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape! Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are standing on the bridge of a tramp steamer, a ship captain, sailing through the vast emptiness of the ocean. While on the deck below you, the crew, a desperate gang of cutthroats and murderers, are waiting for a signal that will give them your ship and bring you your death. Listen now as Escape brings you Anthony Ellis' exciting story, The Tramp. What a stinker. You can smell a rotten carcass from here. What a stinker. He'll sail like a ruddy haystack, you know that, Art. She's with what we've been looking for, Gowdy. Eight knots with the wind behind her. If she don't blow up. I don't like it. There was 6,000 tons of the ugliest tramp I'd ever seen. The paint was scaling off her plates, and you could see the patches of rust. In the fog and mist, she loomed over us dark in the night. We stood on the Liverpool dock, Gowdy, Winkle Jones, and me, and we sized her up. Yes. That's what we've been looking for, all right. Uh-oh. Where's she bound? Baron Kia. We nip. When did you find her? At the pub a bit ago. She's short-handed on crew, too. What's her cargo? What we've been waiting for. Scrap. God. Skipper's name is Blee. He should be easy. He drinks too much all the time. You know the kind. He was in the pub, too. I still say she's too bloody slow. Scrap iron in her old and old. A winkle, winkle. You're a warrior. That's what you are. Why don't you leave that thinking to Alt and me? I think. Do you think she'll do, Alt? She'll have to do. We might not find another for months and then we'll lose the deal. That's all, that's all, that's all. I'm with you. Well, I'm with you too, but... But I don't like the looks of her in that straight. Ruddy black hippopotamus. It'd be safer doing the black than this. I hope to choke. You're getting milky, Winky Jones? No, I ain't milky. You's milky. But you go calling me milky, Bert Gowdy, or I'll stoke your shivy. Eh? God, you little maggot. Maggot, is it? Come on, both of you. All right, all right. Uh, what's the layout? But I'm going back to the pub. You boys wait at the hotel. I'll get things lined up with the skipper. Think, uh, think you'll take us on? I told you he's short-handed. He'll take us on. You get your stuff packed. I'll see you later. Right, chum. I walked up the road to a walloper called a jug. Inside were seamen mostly, and the rest, a lot of dirty muck from narks to dodos. I spotted the captain, Blee, sitting in a corner, dipping his yellow moustache in a mug. And after I got my own pipe, I walked over to him. He was well canned, I could see that. Captain? <laughs> uh, Captain Blee? 
Aren't you skipper of the lice wing over at the docks? Uh, uh, <coughs> I'm pleased. Ah, mind if I sit down? Uh, don't mind. Who are you? Arthur Jennings, Captain. I want to talk to you about shipping on. On the lace wing? What for? I need a berth. I heard you were short-handed. <laughs> it's a dirty lie. Full compliment. Oh. Oh, I must have made a mistake. What's your game? Me? I don't follow you. You're trying to hop the twig? Oh, no, I'm clean with the police, Captain, if that's what you mean. No, they're not after me. Then why do you want to sign up on a blister bladerin's cow like the lace wing, eh? Well, like I said, I need a berth. I got me papers. Second officer in my last ship. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Arthur Jennings. Uh, here, take him. Well... Well, well, am I hired? <sighs> How old are you? Thirty-four. Hmm. How old I am? No. I'm sixty. I'm sixty, and I'm hauling around a bill stinking slush of rubbish like the lace wing. Huh. Now, what that means? I might have had a cunada, but I ain't. <laughs> I'm a failure. And I'm drunk. <laughs> you sign up somewhere else, young fella. Well, job's a job. I'm telling you. Uh, I, I need a man like you. I need a first officer, a second and a third. I, I need a chief engine bloody near, and I'm going to settle for scrapings. That's what I always get, scrapings. Go on, clear out. I still want to sign on. Are oh, you you're bound for Baron Kia? No bonus, no bonus on my ship. Owner doesn't believe in it. <laughs> you dirty dog. Oh, that's all right. You'll have laskers and mugs under you. <laughs> I'm used to it. I've been around on the sea. One man's the same as another. Yeah, you're a fool. But I need a mate. Yeah. You want to hire them in? We shot 18 and the pay's not worth a bunion. I'll get them. Yeah. We're sailing at six in the morning. All right. Ah, you're a fool. Don't turn up! <laughs> I, I gotta have another point. Right you are, Skipper. You stay and enjoy yourself. I'll take care of things topside. Uh, what's your name? Jennings. Arthur Jennings. Jennings. All right. Jennings, uh, tell that steward of mine who you are. He's aboard the lace wing. Named Seddon. Sneaking little pig. I don't trust him. Yes, sir. All right, Jennings. Yes, sir. Uh, tell you something else. I don't trust you neither, see? You're too smooth. But you're not scuppering me, see? Don't forget. It was as easy as pie. Of course, it had taken her time to find the right ship and the right skipper. Yes, better than four months. We had to be sure. And most tramps these days belong to a big company. They're part of a fleet. We couldn't use anything like that. It had to be what it was. The lace wing. Panama registry. A general trader that nobody else would touch with a skipper to go with her. A ship that wouldn't be missed for a while. We'd found her. I picked up Jones and Gowdy and we went back to the ship. The steward, Seddon, was the only man aboard. He was a nervous little rat who looked all the time like he'd been caught doing something nasty. This'll be your cabin, Mr. Jennings. What do you take me for? You call this a cabin? It's not fit for a pig. Get it cleaned out. Oh, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Now, look here, sir. Mr. Gowdy is the new second officer, and Mr. Jones is chief engineer. That's Captain Blee's order. See? Yes, sir. I'll see their quarters is put to rights immediately, sir. Well, you'd very well better. Okay, that's all. Uh, sh sh shall I clean up in here first, sir? No, up it. Yes, sir. We. Oui. I must say, nice work, oh, nice work. Well, it's a starter. Eh? All very nice for you, blokes, but me. I've got to go down in the bowels of this bucket of boggy. Chief engineer, you think I want to blow myself up? I know what their maintenance is like without even looking. You've got engineer paper and we need you down there. 
If you don't like it, you know what you can do. Take no notice of Winkle. He's hungry. Now then, what next? Well, as soon as the old man comes aboard, we'll see that he's all tucked in bed nice and comfy and he doesn't wake up until we're out of here. Mm. What about the rest of the crew? Well, what there is, we can manage. The ones I'm supposed to hire wouldn't sign up, see? That'll be the story. Don't forget it. Right. Well, you better get on the job now. I'll, uh, I'll go ashore and send a cable that we've found it. We're shoving off at six. The skipper was carried aboard by a couple of crewmen at three o'clock that morning. He was no trouble. He was out to the world. By five, the rest of the men had straggled up the gangway. And at six, we eased away from the dock. Then, after a bit, the lace wing was burying a dirty nose in the cross chop of the Irish Sea. We were three days out of Liverpool. I got off the regular ship lanes as soon as I could, and there was no questions asked. But Captain Blee didn't budge from his cabin. I hadn't even seen him since putting out, and I made sure that the steward kept him well supplied with whiskey. Gowdy, Jones, and me were having grub in my cabin on that third night, and the ship was pitching and heaving like a donkey with the itch. Oh, oh what a ship. Smooth as glass out there and look at her. Oh, she'll never make it. The engines won't stand it neither. We're pushing her too hard. Never mind that. What about the crew? Push over. Usual bunch. Yeah. Any troublemakers? In this lot, don't make me laugh. Lot of mugs. Yeah. We ought to be able to make it then. The important thing is to keep the radio man quiet. That'll be your job, Bert. Right. What about them engines? Hey, I tell you, I've got to slow down. They won't hang together. Mr. Meat! Evening, Captain. Who are these bleeders here? Oh, you were a bit under the weather, Captain. I took them on in Liverpool as you requested. Your second officer, Mr. Gowdy, and chief engineer, Mr. Jones. What do you think you're doing with my ship, mister? Any complaints, sir? I knew I didn't trust you, you blister bladdering. Good thing Seddon told me we're ten degrees off course. Know that? That's right, Captain. Not anymore, it's not. I've set her back. You'd have a sail into the Indies. That's right, sir. That's where we're going. Not on my ship. That and Kira's my port. You want to blow us up? She's running too fast. Close the door, will you, Bert? Right, Joe. You. You're relieved, you are, mister. The ruddy lot of you fired, you hear that? I put it to you, Captain, either way you like. You go along with us and you won't get hurt. You make any trouble, then we'll throw you overboard. You what? Me? I have you in irons! Here, this is mutiny! Go, gun, pot! You'll hang for this! Oh, sorry, Captain. You want to take seconds now? You come in with us and we'll give you a share... Or overboard. Now. No arguments this minute. Now. I'll give you a share of my foot. Knock him out. Aggravating old bleeder. Have a look outside. See, it's clear, Joe. Okay. Lee. Better this way, oh. I was afraid he might come in. We'd have to divvy up. I didn't think he would. All clear. All right. Now, come on, Bert. Give me a hand. Oh, thank you. You're... Yeah, it's heavy. Oh, Lord, you old tough guts. Get over to the rail, Jonesy. Okay. Okay. Hurry up, Bruce. Have a nice swim, Captain dear. Well, that's that. In the morning, we'll break the sad news to the crew. Now, let's get this whole back off course. We will return.
return to escape in just a moment. But first, tomorrow night, Frank Lovejoy stars in Suspense's production of The Storm on most of the same CBS radio stations. It's a strange story about a man on a dance team who sets out to prove himself greater than a hurricane. And needless to say, it's a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Don't miss it tomorrow night at the Star's Address, presented by CBS Radio. Suspense, starring Frank Lovejoy. And now, back to Escape. The next morning, I called the crew together on the upper deck. I had a slip of paper ready in my hand, and when they quieted down, I gave them the speech. Men, I've got a sad duty to perform. Last night, Captain Blee did away with himself. Yes, he jumped overboard. He committed suicide. He left a note for me, which I'll turn over to the proper parties when we reach port. Also, it is his instructions that we proceed to Dominica instead of Barranquilla. Now, I'm carrying out that order. And until we get to port, I shall be acting captain. That's all. Get back to your work. So what an actor you'd have made, Art. Lovely, absolutely lovely. Did they swallowed it? I think so. I'm not too sure about a couple of them, though. That steward, Seddon, and the bloke with the... bloke with the mouthful of teeth, the, uh, the donkey man. Donkey man? Austin! Him! Looking this way. Yeah. Well, I'll keep an eye on them both. Now, you better get a message off to our boy in Dominica. Think the radio men will get nosy? There's no reason he should. And don't you give him any call to be, Bert. Don't worry. It looked good. It was all going our way. The ship and her cargo of scrap was going to be worth $15,000 to us when we took her into port. That's the way we fixed it. Six months before. A couple of blokes I met in Liverpool. We were to find them a ship, hijack her, and sail her into Dominica with her cargo. Scrap, if possible. Then they were going to sail her out again to China. And Gaudi, Jones and me, well, we'd blow down to Argentina with our 15,000 and have some fun. That's the way it was. And it looked like it was going to be stone ginger from then on. That's the way it looked until we were two days out of port. Come in. Ah, what do you want, Seddon? Might I have a word with you, Captain? I'm busy. It's important, sir. What? It's about Captain Blee, sir. What about him? Well, sir... I hate to say this, but I don't think he met with no accident. You don't? No, sir. And seeing as how I know what really happened to him, I was thinking maybe it'd be worth a nicker or so if I kept my face shut. Captain Blee jumped over the side, and I've got his note that says so. Could I see the note, sir? I know the captain's writing lot me own. Uh, what makes you think it... Wasn't an accident, Sidden. Seeing as how I saw what happened, sir. Oh. And seeing as how we'll be in port in a couple of days, I wouldn't want to make any trouble for you or any of the other gentlemen, sir. Did you figure maybe something might happen to you? Oh, yes, sir, I did. That's why a friend of mine, Mr. Austin, he knows about it too, just in case. Now, what you do, sir, is your own business, I'm sure. But don't you think it might be worth a little bit of fat to us? You're a ruddy fool, Sidden. You should have waited. You should have waited. Fair, fair, ain't it? 
You did murder. You don't want it. Now, don't forget, Austin knows too. He'll take care of Austin. Now, look here. No need to get nasty. I'll keep the chap shut. I'll... Mr. Jennings, I'll give you my word. Don't hit me. Please, I'll... The explosion threw us both off our feet. Seddon was first up. He got out of the cabin like a whippet. The engines had stopped, and I knew that whatever had happened was in the engine room. I got up to the bridge. Gowdy was already there. Can't raise anyone down there, Alt. Jonesy below? I think so. Give it here. Yeah. Come on, come on. I better get down there. Look at the crew. Go well in for his arms. It's worse off if they get off in the boats. Sidden and Austin know what happened to the captain. Game's up then. Oi, Gowdy. It's me, Art. What happened, Jonesy? Boilers busted. Fire? No, but she's sipping water like a bloody sieve. Are you all right? Smash me arm. Stoke has caught it. They're all done in. I'll send some men. How many do you need to stop the leak? You can't stop it. There's an old six feet or more, and another behind the boiler. I'm coming up. Oh, well done, we are. Get over to the radio cabin. Don't let that man send an SOS quick. He's got you all. We might not get picture. You heard what I said. We've still got a chance after we take care of Seddon and Austin. If they split it all up, it's like, go on. Uh, we're in who's flooding. Shall I give the order to abandon ship? No, get the pumps going. Yes, sir, but the cargo ship to an explosion. She's going past, sir. Get on the pumps. Bert, get down there with them. I'll take care of the others. Will you listen to me? It's too late. Move it! I ran down to the radio room. We had to stop the call from going out because if there was a ship in the vicinity and it got to us before we put the quiet on Seddon and Austin, the three of us would hang. Yet the sinking ship was a sight less worry. I heard the message before I even opened that door. Stop it. I've been sending it, sir. Already got an answer. I said stop it. We're sinking, sir. It's my duty. I, I have we to... We are not under yet. You think I want us hauled in for salvage rights? You send out that we're okay, see? Now, you do it now. Need no assistance. Send. There's a ship about 20 miles off, sir. She could stand by just in case. She's on her way You do a... as you're told. Need no assistance. Better get them boats over the side. We're done for. Five minutes, not even that. Come on out here. Now, listen to me, Jonesy. We've got to get the steward and one of the crewmen, Austin. They have twigged. We've got to do it before we leave the ship. How? What are you going to do? Shoot them in front of the crew? We wouldn't stand a chance. They'd carve us up. Let's get off this here tub. There's sharks out there, and I want a boat around me. Not until we've taken care of those Now, two. listen. You do what you want. See, I'm clearing out now. I told you them engines wouldn't stand it. Well, they haven't. Now I'll take me chances with the law, but not here. She's breaking up. I'm going to get the boots over the side. Come on, let's get out. I'm with you, Bert. Abandoned ship. Abandoned ship. There was still a chance. I could do it myself. Find Austin. Find that dirty little rat, Seddon. Do them both in, then there was still a chance that nobody would know. I went looking for them. The tramp was listing and settling lower in the sea, and I ran from one side to the other. Hit it? Then I spotted them. The lifeboat was already in the water. I saw Seddon looking up at me, pointing. Then Austin saw me. I jumped for the boat, and I missed. She pulled away from the side. Wait! Wait! Hold up! Where is Seddon? Give us a hand! Where? I was at the wheel in there. No, I don't. Please, help like now. Well, hey, give us a hand, will you? Oh, I'll let you drown, you dirty murderer. He's going to kill me. He's not even there. No. Oh, get me out. Get me You'll out. make a confession, see? All these other blokes is witnesses. You confess. You confess now or you can swim for it. Why oh, did I did it. What did you do? What did you do? I killed the captain. You and your mother, too. Answer me! Yes! All right. Come on now. Over the long like a top, 
I'm all smiles and great. Yeah, the first time I saw it. The very first time. I knew that tramp was a stinker. You, them ends were no bloody good. Oh, shut it off, shut it off, Winkle. Oi, out. What? Lovely grub, wasn't it? All right, if you like jail grub. Wish I had some bile beans. My stomach, sir. Yeah, won't have to worry about that for long. It's all right for you, Bert Gardy. Ain't your stomach. I should have known better than to screw up to a couple of half-wide mugs like you. Fifteen thousand dollars. First time I saw that ruddy scow, I knew... Come off it, Jonesy. I want to get some sleep. Always complaining, always complaining. Oh, ain't it wicked when you think we're all going down to the same place? And he'll be there along with us. I'll tell you, Bert. It's hopeless. He'll complain the rope's too tight around his neck when they hang us in the morning. What do you bet? Escape has brought you The Tramp, written and directed by Anthony Ellis, starring Ben Wright as Jennings, with Jay Novello as Gowdy and Charlie Lung as Winkle Jones. Featured in the cast were Tudor Owen, Alec Harford, Lou Krugman, and Charles Davis. Editorial supervision is by John Meston. And the special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week. You are standing in a darkened room in the heart of Russia's dread Lubyanka prison. Your mind tortured into blankness. While across a desk from you, happily smiling at you, is the chief of Russia's secret police, who intends to drive you to insanity or to death. So listen next week when Escape brings you John Daner's exciting story, The Man with the Steel Teeth. What's new with our gal Sunday? Following the latest case of Perry Mason, are things more complicated for young Dr. Malone? Confidentially, Aunt Jenny's in the midst of a mighty unusual story. There's a world of entertainment awaiting you every weekday in the daytime with CBS Radio's roster of wonderful dramatic serials. Tomorrow, listen in again and follow the latest in the lives of these familiar people. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, daytime is a gay time with Arthur Godfrey time. Every day on the CBS Radio Network. 